I cannot, I, I would love to show the tattoo. I swear to God, the tattoo is real. I would prefer if it was fake. <laughs> It's it's real. Uh, let, later, let's tell. Let's, let's just fucking jump into the story, dude. Let me tell you everything about the fucking truth of the matter. Okay, a long, long time ago, a young man named SKT One Faker played his very first game. He graduated from high school the exact same time as this guy, and they both went into professional League of Legends play. One of them, Faker, was instantly amazing. Oh, they dropped out. I'm sorry, they dropped out to play League. <laughs> Yikes! Don't do that, by the way. Unless, you guys, unless you're at this guy's level, don't drop out. At the time, a slightly older man in college <laughs> was obsessed with League of Legends, obsessed with mid lane, and watched every single game in Korea to learn how to get better, okay? On the very first game I saw of Faker, which is his very first professional game, I wrote this article. I wrote, SKT1 Faker is a genius artist and the mid lane is his brush. <laughs> because he played against the former best player, Ambition, and he beat him 1v1 in like a sick way, Nidalee versus Kha'Zix. So I started watching every single game of this guy. Uh, he had a big impact on me as a player, and he was the one I would study to get better, and it worked. Like, I got way up in the rankings because I, I copied Faker and watched Faker. And then, in that very first year, when I was still uh, hustling to events and, and traveling around, Faker made it to the World Championships, and it was in Staples Center. And Staples Center was where I lucked my way in to getting a ticket through a LinkedIn raffle. And at Staples Center, while cheering for Faker, <laughs> I ended up getting my first job at Twitch. So it was like all, it was all intertwined. And I felt like this connection to T1 and I've been a fan forever. And then for the next, you know, many years I watched religiously. And then after my job at Twitch and eventually moving to Nvidia, I started fading out of uh, the League of Legends scene, but every world I would watch T1. And so this year, the story was that T1 was finally really good again. And not just them, but Faker. Faker was finally really good again. And so I got pretty excited and I tweeted this. If Faker wins it all this year, I'm getting a T1 tattoo. This is back in October 13th. T1 and Faker kept winning, including an absolutely legendary semifinal set versus JDG. One of the best sets T1 has ever played. Uh, an absolute domination of the Chinese scene, which has been dominating League of Legends for the past few years. It was kind of like a return to form for Korea. Anyway, it was an amazing series. And it becomes the idea of like, getting the tattoo after the win, that's cool. <laughs> but getting it before, I mean, that's way funnier. <laughs> T1 World Champs 22. And we include the year, okay? We include the year. <laughs> what you're about to see, after I got the tattoo, they, they had to wrap it in plastic. And then he said, keep that on there for a week. It's gonna bleed into the plastic. If you don't like that, don't look. I just want you to know that's what you're gonna see. There's, that's just to prove. See, it's real. It's real. That's fine. All right. Wow. I bleed for this team. Hondo P real. Getting a tattoo after your team win shows pride, but getting one the day before they play, that shows confidence. <laughs> And I was confident. When I get to Worlds, it's the most sick fucking energy ever. I have my Faker shirt. I got a, a, the T1 bomber jacket. I got the tat. <laughs> I'm just fucking, I'm, I'm ride or die T1. And I'm walking around Worlds. And I got so many people asking for pictures. And every single one of them, I, I said, I'm not taking a picture unless you're a T1 fan. <laughs> You know, whether they lied or not, every single person was like, yeah, hell yeah, T1, baby, let's go. So I took a bunch of pictures. I was walking around. The energy was fucking awesome, dude. And then we go out and we're like courtside with 12 seats. And I'm never, I've never sat anywhere close to anything like this. So it's like fucking awesome. So again, we're like right there. We're like right next to it, right? And it's like, oh, this is sick. You know, and shit's happening. And the energy is fucking crazy. And it's like, yes. And I'm, again, again, I got this fucking tattoo. I'm so invested. I'm invested in this game. And then the game starts. <laughs> the game starts and all of the gameplay is on the screens up here, dude. It's, it's above my head like this. Like the second the game starts, I can't, I have to do this. And I'm like seeing half the game. It's ridiculous. What the fuck? We have like the best seats in the house and it's the worst seats. In the it's literally the worst seats in the house. What we did was, Every time the game would start, we would sit courtside. I would scream, let's go Faker! And then if, if, uh, if uh, any um, DRX guys walked past us going to their stage, I'll go, boo! 
And then immediately we'd go into the back room, which has the big TV, and we would just watch it there. <clears throat> I was toxic. I was toxic. Again, it's league. It's the league in me, dude. Then I go back to the back room and we'd watch the whole game uh, and then go back out. Right, I, right as the game was ending, we would go back out and hear the energy of the crowd. And game one, man. Oh, game one. Beauty, grace, exactly what I expected out of the finals. They were just crisper in every lane. They had a unique but powerful draft. T1 just played godlike in game one. And I was like, yes, I was so pumped. Dude, my my mental and my worldview after game one, I was running around, I was hyping people up. There was these two girls behind our, our 12 seats or whatever that had a big T1 flag and, a, and we were all just jumping up and down and waving their flag. <laughs> And then game two happens. <laughs> you just look, I've watched a lot of league. And what I noticed was not just that they lost game two, but that they looked a little, sh a little nervous, <laughs> a little shaky. Game three comes around and actually game three made me more nervous than anything else. Because game three, if you really watch it, is actually the shakiest play. T1 gets a lot of miracles in game three. <laughs> in the moment, I've never had more, more emotion. I didn't want to say fun. It was fun, but... I've never been so invested in a in a sporting match of any kind. I've never even really truly understood it, to be honest. Like for real sports, I've never understood people that are so invested. But for this one, I was. I was emotionally highs, lows. I was, I was, uh, I was. Uh, my eyes were glued to the to the match the entire time. I was like, I really, I felt the rush. Game three, T1 barely clutches it out. Game four, they get stomped. Game five, it, it it's like. <sighs> And I really believed in my heart of hearts that just, that it would happen. Do you know what I'm saying? I, Cause I, I hated the draft, but I trust, I trust dude. Cause I was nervous after the draft in game one. For some reason I wasn't as nervous game five. I was just like, this will work out. <laughs> the game goes pretty badly from the jump. And at a certain point, I don't know, 20 minutes in, T1 loses a major fight and it looks over. It looks like completely over. Their, their comp is worse. They're down in gold and DRX goes to take Baron. So this is the stadium. This is our seats. It goes out into a hallway. And then in the hallway, this is our room, right? So I'm sitting here. When T1 lose that fight, I, I go like this. I just sink into my chair. I can't look at the screen. And I just look down like this and I stand up and I leave. I literally walked out of the room and I walk this way. And right as I walk in this room, and by the way, there's a full screen right here. This is where the screen is. Right as I walk in this room, this happens. The greatest clip, I think, man, one of the greatest clips in League Finals history. Baron, they take down four of T1. Look at this, four T1 members dead, free Baron. This is just, everyone knows this is over. Four kills to eight. One. They're up dragons. They're up in comp. They have a better scaling cut. It's, it's the flake from Pioshik on the top side and then teleport in from Zeka. TRX circled T1 like shocks. Varus TPs into mid lane. <laughs> he blows TP just to walk up here. Hurting them in. T1 didn't find a response. Guma, can he steal it? He charges an arrow. <laughs> Guma will no have way. to fly right here. Dude, I, oh my God, dude. I walk in, I saw that on the TV and I felt like, I felt like I was in a fucking, now that I'm a weeb, an anime. <laughs> dude, I felt like it was a fucking mirror. It, Cause that is such a one in a million. Do you know what I'm saying? You, he can't see. When he shoots this, he can't see the HP. He shoots the arrow blind. He has no vision. It's a one in a, it's the fucking Doctor Strange moment. And that happened and I was like, holy fuck, it's plot armor. T1's gonna win this thing. I mean, I, I was, I was, I was losing it. I was losing it. I, 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 was, I was, it was the sickest fucking thing I ever seen. I say, I'm using my one time God. This is what I tweeted at the beginning of game five. Normal reactions, normal replies. But after that Baron steal, I started getting a gazillion replies that were all like, and God sent Guma. <laughs> Cause it really felt like the one time. This just never happens. This never fucking happens, dude. A blind Baron steal against five. Uh, it's just so sick. And then T1 plays great. T1 plays great. They get a ton off of it. They start taking the whole fucking map. It seems like they're making it happen. Deft hasn't hit his three item spike yet. So he's still weak. And it all seems good. And then, oh 
Oh. And then they make a couple fucking errors, dude. Just what really happens is Karia makes his first error of the whole fucking tournament and gets caught in a trap and dies to Kingen. But you can't even blame Karia. I know he cries afterwards. It's really fucking sad. It was so sad. So right when they realize that they're not going to get Elder Dragon, they have one last miracle in their pocket. It's actually so goaded. And they do a double teleport in the bush. Faker hides and uh, and uh, Zeus hides. And they both double TP to this open lane to try and backdoor the Nexus. Oh, 240p. I know, I know. Faker's in, you can see right here, he's in top lane. He's going to push the Nexus to win. And all they have to do is stop their back. And I think they were praying. I don't think they knew. I think they were hoping that Kingen didn't have his teleport. Because if they can stop Kingen's teleport, then against all odds, they somehow would have won this game despite being way down. The push was actually unstoppable if they could just stop Kingen's teleport. But unfortunately, he backs up way beyond his team and they just can't get him. And I've watched this clip a million times and I've always wondered, like, what if Karia flashed in? <laughs> what if Karia ran forward and flashed in and stopped his TP? It, and just died for it. It would have been, but I, yeah, it, there's no karma CC, right? Nothing can stop it. But just, just ah, ah, just what if? Just what? It's like a world. There's a world where something in this fight goes a little differently, and somebody can stop this, and it's the most miracle ending of all time. Uh, anyway, they can't. They can't. There's nothing they can do. And the TP goes off. And again, this Aatrox letting it through was the biggest mistake of draft. It's the strongest, most busted character. Q3, no damage do. just yet. Elder Drake, the no MCU, That's so sad. <sighs> it's devastating. It's absolutely devastating. Uh, and then so, you know, immediately, um, I'm heartbroken. DRX 3-0-ing wouldn't have hurt nearly as bad as that ending. It's so, oh. The emotions, dude. I'm crushed. I'm crushed. Uh, and right then, of course, my friend sticks a camera in my face. <laughs> Don't fucking film me! <laughs> oh, Lord. I was just so sad. If you haven't experienced this, I don't blame you because I never have before. I've never been so invested in a in an esports or sporting match. And it really, really, really actually was so sad. It was such a high and low. I was at... I was at such peaks of happiness and such lows. Truly, like as a League fan, this was the best worlds ever. As a T1 fan, I'm, I'm miserable, I'm depressed. But as a League fan, it was such a good world. And if you were just there to watch good, good, entertaining esports, it was one of the best finals of any game. I mean, it was, it was such a good story. The two high school friends and rivals facing off in the finals, Deft, his last year before military service, like if he doesn't win it now, it's over for him. Right as I'm processing all of this, I still have the fact that I made this fucking tweet. <laughs> the default joke, well, this aged like milk. <laughs> Got that a lot, okay? That's the default, and I expected that, okay? The hard part was that apparently this got into the LATAM community. Something about the LATAM community really didn't like it because I got so many quote retweets that was like, ja, 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 kill yourself. <laughs> so I dropped my, my backup tweet, which I had ready, by the way. I am and always have been the biggest T1 MK Leo fan in the world. And this tattoo reflects that. <laughs> which I thought was the goaded backup tweet because Leo never loses, right? Leo's definitely gonna win Smash World Tour, Hopium. <laughs> and there are a couple replies that I wanted to just highlight to you guys because the worst possible thing happened, which is that I got a tweet in my defense from Keemstar. <laughs> Bro, fuck you. I don't want your, I don't want your defense. Fuck off, dude, you got a tattoo of your 16 year old girlfriend probably. Please 100 meter dash race Connor eats pants and then get a tattoo of that. <laughs> Actually, I would love to see him get a tattoo of I will beat Connor in the 100 meter dash and then do it and then have, and then I'll respond and say, don't let him clown you, bro. You have a let them funny story. Tarek, Giga Chad. Mm-hmm. Real recognize real. I got the goat himself. <laughs> MK Leo today. MK Leo showed up and said, I got you, bro. No worries. <laughs> 
So I'm certain. I'm certain he'll clutch it up for the history of the tat. I, listen, a lot of people thought it was very hilarious to link me uh, tattoo removal services. <laughs> and while I could go that route, could get rid of the tattoo, pretend it never happened. What I would rather do is get a line through this 22 and put a goddamn 23 underneath it. And I'm gonna do that every fucking year until Faker wins or retires. That's my plan, baby. I am doubling down. I am gonna do this every fucking year until Faker wins or Faker retires. On God, we're adding a 23 to this fucking list. I don't care if it wraps around my goddamn foot and up my arm and up my neck. <laughs> I'm gonna keep adding years.